In this video, I'll share some knowledge and experience from an uh, engineer standpoint to the home audio system. Uh, I'll talk about the small home uh, audio system, most focus on the Bookshare speaker and the small amplifier. In the modern world, I believe everyone will have using or own some type of the audio equipment. Uh, most likely in the different environment. Sometimes like you are in your working desk. Sometimes when you are in your living room or even when you do the exercise or you in your travel you might also own some different type of the equipment it is very interesting for a human uh, usually your eyes is most important uh, organ to get the information from outside world and your ear may be the second one. But in the entertainment uh, area, if you are eye watching movie, or watching TV, if you pay like a couple thousand dollars to buy a big screen high definition TV, most likely you are already certified. But when you go to the audio equipment, there is uh, endless like uh, pursue. Sometimes you want a small ear part. Sometimes you want a, like a wireless uh, speaker, and sometimes you go much much deeper to the home theater or high end audio. It look like uh, the audio world never ended. If you walk into a audio store, you can see the small equipment, uh, maybe priced from ten, fifteen dollar, and in some middle range equipment, it range about a couple hundred dollar to thousand dollar, and some high end stuff even like hundred, hundred thousand. It, it, some people may say, uh, audio equipment is we overpriced, but the other people also think of uh, what you get is what you pay. People live in different lifestyle. Some people willing to pay a lot of money to buy a nice car, sporty car. Some people they want to travel around the world. They can pay a lot of money for the fly, for the hotel. And the audio five, audio five people, they pay a couple thousand dollars for one of the power cord or signal cable. Uh, for the other people, might think that, that is crazy, but yeah, that's the lifestyle different people uh, live on. For myself, I treat electronic as a habit. I fix uh, vintage amplifier and all kind of equipment. Uh, I'm more interested in how this equipment working and how to make them work better and how to upgrade them to make more better sound. Uh, this is over my instinct of how to use this equipment. When we watch TV, sky is blue, clouds white, flowers colorful. Most likely, people all agree with that. But when we talk about the music or audio system, most of the time, it looks like people cannot get a common agreement to what is the good sound quality. A lot of people always argue uh, this is my personal 
preference. I want this and you want that. We just not be able to get a common agreement. I will start this topic from the most important element in the audio system, the speaker. Everybody know when you are set up a audio system, it doesn't matter in the home or professional audio system, the rule is more than 50% of the money should go to the speaker and the rest of the money go to the uh, amplify, pre-amplify or the signal source, all kind of the other equipment. Why we said speaker is the most important element and why we need it set 50% or more money into that uh, element. It's not because speaker is more important than the other element. It is because the speaker is the most difficult to make at the same uh, quality of the other equipment. Uh, we all heard about that something called what, uh, wood bucket theories. The wood bucket, the quantity of the water that bucket can hold is depends on the solid the wood in the bucket. By this kind of a calculation, which speaker and what price of the speaker you pick almost immediately uh, get the price of your whole system. Uh, if we say, can I build a home audio system under $2,000 or even under $1,500? If that system, can I get a decent sound quality from that? or go the other way. If I'm willing to pay more than my vehicle's price for that uh, sound system, do I actually get a uh, sound quality, actually say what I get is what I pay? Now let's go to see some of the sample uh, speaker in the market to see uh, how do we decide to pick a, a speaker uh, good for yourself? If you're looking for the speaker price range about $800 to $1,500, and most likely you will have hit the BMW 600 series and the BMW 700 series speaker. This speaker are uh, very popular. If you search for the review for the BMW 606 S2 edition, you will see that speaker get like at least 95% of a good review in the internet. A lot of people recommend this is the best speaker you can buy in this uh, price range. And also if you dig uh, deeper, you will see some of the reviewers highly uh, reject this speaker. They said this speaker has some problem in the sound quality. You have something like uh, in the high frequency, they have some sort of a forward, and some sort of a putty if you listen to it for a long time. And what's going on on that kind of a the difference of, from the different reviewer? Uh, there is some science behind that. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about the theory of that speaker. Look at the speaker response on the right side. I get this uh, measurement from one of my respect. Uh, engineer from the YouTube, we can see there is a problem in the speaker 12K to 2K 
uh, frequency range. There is a dip and a, what, a peak in this range. This kind of the measurement is well explained why this speaker had something like high frequency. You listen to that for a long time, you will feel fatigue and you have some sort of a forward kind of a feeling. Yeah, actually, it is show up in the scientist measurement. Maybe someone will say, oh yeah, because I'm aging, so my ear got uh, lost the hearing to the high frequency. So this speaker, uh, it got a little bit lump up on the high frequency, maybe good for me. Or some other people may say, oh yeah, my loom have too much absorb to the sound. So the high frequency is lost. So this speaker is good for me. But this is all not the argument about the sound. Because the speaker is supposed to be designed to like uh, respond flat to all the frequency. If you do have hearing problem, you can use your amplifier to like a turn higher of your treble or some other uh, equipment to be to fix this kind of a problem. But it's not supposed to go to the speaker design to doing something like that. And it definitely is not the designer, the engineer intend to do that. It, it is a design or the producing issue. Maybe because it's the cause or some other uh, matter caused that, but somehow it's not supposed to like that. Let's look at the other example. This is a Crypt speaker. It's very popular in American and the price range is also in the thousand dollar to fifteen hundred that kind of range. And this speaker also get a lot of good uh, review. When we look at the measurement, it have a deep dive in the a thousand hertz. A thousand hertz is human ear very sensitive area. When you get a dive in a thousand hertz, that means you are a thousand hertz will be lower. And then after around like 1100, and that thing, is the, the frequency response is climb up to higher than the average uh, response. At this point, you will hear the uh, high frequency treble will be much, much higher than the uh, lower frequency. Say, 1200 hertz will be much higher than 1k hertz. And this kind of the hearing you will feel is something called what? Forward. Or you, you hear something like a fatigue. And you feel, you hear something like a, just like a pick your ear, that kind of a feeling. It gives the people uh, kind of the not very comfortable that kind of feeling about this kind of uh, measurement. I put the uh, like a graphic EQ uh, picture down there. It this kind of response is similar to you adjust your EQ to pull down the one thousand hertz and push up the like uh, twelve to fifteen hundred hertz that kind of the EQ adjustment. Uh, I don't believe a lot of people will do that in your normal listening. I did have experience uh, when I play with uh, audio thing in like uh, 80s. Uh, we make the EQ equipment like a U shape. We push up the 50 hertz and uh, 100 hertz and push down a thousand hertz and push up the 3k to 4k hertz 
make a U shape. That's because at that time we don't have a good speaker. All the speaker are people corn. They cannot produce a very good uh, phase and and high frequency. Those speakers drop down, so we have to use the EQ to compensate that. The measurement and the sound issue definitely uh, is from the design and the build. Uh, it might not uh, only caused by one uh, element in the speaker or in the whatever designer, but when you look inside, uh, I copied the uh, one of the YouTubers. Uh, he 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 tear down this speaker to check inside. You can see the crossover is not using the high quality pass. They have a lot of say like what cost cutter that kind of the 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 element inside. Unfortunately, uh, this kind of the pass chip pass using in the speaker system it's not only happen in one uh, speaker maker it's almost every speaker maker they have some sort of the budget limited Th that's the only way they can make the speaker within the budget think of it this way the speaker sale in the store if it's a thousand dollar then the cost can be one ten of the sale price. Uh, that means the speaker pass and the labor cost and all kind of the management cost in the manufacture is only a hundred dollar. With this hundred dollar budget, how the manufacturer make this speaker out? Yeah, I think that's the only way they can do. And even worse, this not only happen in the uh, speaker in the lower end, like a thousand dollar or fifteen hundred dollar. It also happened to the high, a little more high end speaker. Like if I say thousand dollar won't give me the better sound, the the good sound, I can move to two thousand, three thousand, or four thousand. Is that guarantee I can get the better sound? Yeah, you might get the better sound from $4,000 speaker than the $1,000. But you are not guaranteed to be able to get the $4,000 sound. It did might mean you are not get what you pay. Are we saying all oh, these speaker are bad speaker? They are not sound good? No, definitely not. Because the modern technology and modern uh, material, it makes the speaker much, much better than uh, decades ago. So, only problem for this is because the manufacturer have the budget limited, they cannot make the speaker as good as it's supposed to be. If you're doing your homework, uh, to get a good set of a speaker, what we're saying, the good set is the material is good. And the main component, like the speaker, and the, what, the cabinet, the build is good. And then those speaker, might have some in profit, but the base is pretty strong. By that kind of a situation, we might be able to find some solution to update the speaker uh, to make it sound like it's supposed to be. In this case, if you have a existing speaker or you have a target speaker, uh, you can find some information in the internet. Uh, some provider can uh, find the solution or they provide a path 
to be able to update the speaker to make it sound much much better than uh, the uh, it come from the store, and this is the one solution. With this solution, you don't have to move up from like a thousand dollar speaker to a four thousand dollar speaker. You may just need to pay a couple hundred dollar to uh, update the speaker to make it as good as the four thousand dollar speaker. So that way, uh, we probably be able to uh, press our budget to a lower point than expected. The other solution to get a budget speaker to have a uh, decent good sound quality is to build your own. There is a lot of DIY kit out in the internet. You just need to find one uh, with a lot of information. Uh, also, you need to double check or are they using the good equipment, uh, the good uh, element the good path and they provide enough information for you to build it or even you can buy the uh, preview the everything like the, the company already cut off uh, ready to assemble and all the paths and already provided and only thing you need to do is just have a basic like a solder it be so the skill to put everything together, and by this way, uh, I believe if you're willing to pay a thousand dollar, you will get a speaker. I will believe it gonna be the five thousand dollar speaker at least. If you're willing to pay like three, four hundred dollar uh, kit, it definitely will be two or three thousand dollar speaker. I think a lot of people gonna ask you a question. How do I know I got a good speaker? How do I know the speaker I build is good enough? I don't have the equipment. I have. I don't have the knowledge to read this kind of a. Uh, what measurement chart or something like that, and I don't interesting about those things. Uh, you are not doing this thing. You are build a speaker or you buy the speaker, set up a speaker for your ear. So you got your ear, and your ear is the everything you need to test whatever you build or whatever you buy and whatever you set up. Most of us uh, might not have the luxury uh, to listen to the live play music every day and might also not have a lot of opportunity to listen to the high-end audio equipment. So how do we know the equipment we are building or we are willing to buy is good? The easy solution of this is to get a good pair of the earphone. Well, there is a whole bunch of earphone out there. The good and the cheapest way to get the good earphone is the over ear, multi the serial, and the wired. Don't buy the wireless. Because the wireless, they have amplified inside, the manufacturer put the artificial, uh, some sort of the manipulated sound inside. So get the wireless uh, earphone, which as flat respond, uh, frequency response as you can. You don't have to buy a very expensive earphone. Maybe a $100, $200 earphone will be much, much better than the five thousand dollar speaker and you also need a, one of the uh, deck some sort of a the, like a, a show in the video right now the THX deck I have one of them and some people prefer that dragonfly thing but this thing is a little expensive or three hundred dollar 
but it's, it's very very good deck. With this kind of a deck, you connect to your computer or your phone. You use the HD, or even you find a very good quality uh, YouTube music. You'll be able to play very good uh, playback from your earphone. You can hear a lot of detail, a lot of quick response, a lot of flat response from the earphone. Much much better than the normal speaker. So with that, you can use that to compare to the same music to the uh, speaker you have. You listen to the detail, the listen to the music uh, playback to compare them. And the next step is you have to build your own uh, listen. Skill with the earphone or with a good pair of speaker to make yourself honest to the music. What that mean? I mean, you supposed to listen to the music. What the music a musician or the recorder want you to listen, not the one. And not the way you want the music to be. And that's very important. <laughs> very important. This is two cents I want to share with you. Hope it can help you to uh, from the engineer standpoint to understand why different uh, reviewer, uh, why different uh, manufacturer, uh, commercial their equipment or their system different, and then a little bit clear this kind of confusing.